We're going to simulate lightning in this dusk shot that I took. And there's nothing more crazy than daytime lightning without a storm. And I've seen it. So we're going to go to the layer menu and choose new layer. That way we don't harm our original background image. And I'll call it lightning one. When I click OK, there's a few steps to this. I'm going to start by hitting the letter G for gradient on my keyboard. The feature we're going to use, which is clouds or difference clouds, doesn't work on a clear or empty layer. And you could think of the layer like a clear piece of acetate that we're overlaying on the background image. And in this case, the background is the shot of this building. So I'm going to hold down my Shift key. Shift prevents the gradient from bending at an angle. It will go straight black to the left and white on the right. The longer you drag, the more shades you get. But I want a nice, sharp transition. So I do a short drag. I will step all the way backward. And you don't have to do this. I'm just doing it for illustration. On my first drag, while holding down the Shift key, I'm only dragging to about the edge of this first building. Now here comes the magic. Filter, Render. And filters are technically called plugins to Adobe. They plug into the application and extend the functionality. A lot of filters are used for special effects. And I use the Render Clouds a lot to make up new sky when sky isn't there if you have a shade of blue and pink or white and blue. But in this case, we want difference clouds, very ominous, very stark clouds. All right, so it's difficult to see right here, but I can see a bit of my lightning forming. Now I need the opposite of the colors. Where this black is shooting through, I need it to be white. So I will choose from the Image menu, Adjustments, and Invert. There it is. I'm seeing my first strike of lightning. To make this really pop, I'm going to use Image, Adjustments, and Levels. Levels means color levels, and it adjusts the black, the white, and every shade in between on any given image. When I choose Image Adjustment Levels, I'm going to start with the black and move it very far which, in essence, wipes out everything except the lightning. Now, it's okay if you have bands or little remnants here and there. We'll simply erase them with the eraser tool. You'll want to play with the black and the gray to really get like a glow or spike on that lightning. There, I'm getting really close. Now, if you wanted exactly what I've got here, you could type in my numbers that you're seeing in the dialog. However, your gradient probably isn't exactly matching mine, and the difference clouds filter or plugin will generate something different every time. So you could run it a couple times and get different results. But I'm going to leave it about here, and I'll pause so you can write down the numbers or you can pause the video. I'll click OK, and to really make it look like lightning is hitting this scene, I'm going to choose a layer blending mode. A layer blending mode controls how the lightning layer on top of the background image interact. So the one that I love is lighten. Lighten the image with the lightning. And now it looks like it's shooting right in the frame and hitting a random pedestrian. But we're actually going to go back to normal. And the reason I'm back on normal is I see some pieces I need to get rid of. I'm going to erase those first. And technically, I'm not really erasing. I actually want to paint with black because all of the background is black. So on my paintbrush tool, I will choose a bigger brush size. There we go. And I'll simply paint over any little pieces that I see left over from the difference clouds. And you might paint away whole parts of the lightning. It's your call what you keep and what you get rid of. And I'm careful not to get too close to the edge, 
because I don't really want to see a hard brush line here where I've cleaned up. All right. Now, to make this look more realistic, we're going to have it hit one of the points on the building, or one of the spires. So I'm going back to the layer blending mode. I'm choosing lighten, and you could play with the other ones. It really produces some quite surreal special effects with these layer blending modes. Now I'm going to switch to the move tool, the top tool in my toolbar, and choose edit, free transform. And with edit free transform, I can move this up and I can decide to hit that spire or this spire. I think I'll go for the one in the background. It looks more like that could happen right in front of me. And if I wanted to scale it at all, I could stretch it, make it bigger or smaller. If you don't hold down the shift key, it disproportionately scales, but that's okay. Lightning can look all kinds of wacky ways. And if I move a hair to the outside, I can rotate. The rotate shows you kind of a bent arrow and then move it back into position. But I have to be careful. This doesn't look realistic, the lightning coming in front of me in the building. So you want to make sure that your lightning stays in the background. And there are more tricks to get this to align better, but I'm just going to scale it down, rotate a little bit more, and make sure my lightning doesn't hit the building. In fact, if I'm happy with this and I press return or enter or double click to make it look more realistic, I can go back to my paintbrush tool and just erase away. But it's fading a little bit here. So if I undo and use a much smaller brush and click away in what I call the safety area, right here is the safety zone. Then it will look like the lightning is striking behind the building. Now I'm going to pause the video for a moment and add a couple more layers for more hits of lightning on the same spire. And when I resume, you'll see those new layers added. If you want to do this yourself, you're just going to start with layer, new layer, and repeat the steps I did earlier. Doing a gradient, running filter, render, difference clouds, going to your image menu, choosing adjustments and invert and then finish it off with image adjustments levels. And the last step is your layer blending mode of Lighten. So I'm pausing now, and when I resume, you'll see a much cooler shot. All right, as we come back, you'll notice I've built four different layers, and I'll correct that last name. So I've created several different spikes coming off of one piece of lightning and then one that kind of shot directly down. And for the last touch for this ominous piece of lightning, you could run down at the bottom of your layers panel a levels on the whole image. If I choose levels in properties, I can make everything darker and everything in the middle a little bit darker. And now it's starting to get very foreboding or very ominous. And all of these are non-destructive edits. I could turn on and off each piece of lightning by clicking the eye icon to the left. So I'm going to leave it with this dark shot. And I would like you to see if you could find a partially dark image of yours, but you could always make it darker and use the filter, which is technically a plug-in of difference clouds in order to create this lightning. Good luck.